Uh, is the gentleman is he the last speaker on his side? I, I am. I, you are looking at the last speaker on this side, uh, so I'm prepared to close if the gentleman is. I, I appreciate it. Uh, let, let me. Uh, how much time do I have left, Mr. Speaker? One and one fourth minutes. All right, Mr. Speaker. Let me urge all my colleagues, uh, both Republican and Democrat, to oppose this rule. This is a martial law rule. There's 1,200 pages of legislation that nobody has read. This is not the way this house should be run. People who are watching this on TV are scratching their heads and wondering how in the world can members of Congress vote on legislation that they've never seen, that they, that they haven't had a chance to read. Well, that's exactly what we're being asked to do, to do tonight, and that's wrong. What is happening right now is a deliberate attempt to essentially uh, give people cover on the minimum wage and on a bill that will die. Uh, this is not going to be enacted into law. We know that because the Senate has already made it clear that they are not going to support this legislation. And so this is political cover for Republicans who are afraid that they're going to be criticized for not voting for the minimum wage. If you want a minimum wage, then vote for it up or down. Don't clutter it up with tax breaks for millionaires and for special corporate interests. The fact of the matter is that it takes a full day's pay for a minimum wage earner to fill just one tank of gas. The average CEO earns 821 times more than a minimum wage worker. The average CEO earns more before lunchtime than a minimum wage worker earns all, all year. Let's not be cynical. Let's defeat this martial law rule. Let's give the members of this House an opportunity to vote on the minimum wage, up or down. That's what the American people deserve. Vote no on this martial law rule. Time gentleman's expired. Gentleman from Washington. Yield myself the balance of the time, Mr. Speaker.